huge audience today. It's really great. Really appreciate it. Uh, hello, everybody on the live stream and uh, that's tuning in later on. My name is Jeff Wentworth. I'm co-founder of a, a company called Curve Grid, and this is a 30-minute dap. So what we're going to do for the next 30 minutes is basically walk through building a sample dap, and we're going to show you how it's possible to do that um, faster and easier than it might be if you build everything from scratch. Um, so basically what we're going to do today is, is not only talk about building a dap, but also some of the challenges uh, that, that you encounter building a dap, and then talk about some uh, let's say bonuses that that um, uh, you know might might help you uh, um, uh, more broadly in your DAP building experience. So first of all, uh, as I mentioned, my name is Jeff, co-founder of CurveGrid. Um, we're actually based here in Tokyo, Japan. Um, we have been uh, in business since 2017 for six years, and mostly we we tend to be in the background a little bit. So uh, our our customers tend to be. Uh, blockchain companies or developers that are building um, different kind of dApps on uh, EVM blockchains. And really for the first time at this ETH Global Hackathon, uh, we're looking to connect with more individual developers and a much broader audience. So you can see us here in the red uh, coveralls. Uh, we're here to help. We have 10 people at the, the at uh, ETH Global Tokyo. And um, uh, you know if you have any questions about building a dApp in general, not just our product, but uh, anything technical related, design related, uh, or just about Tokyo and Japan, we're here to help. Um, so creating a dApp, uh, and and in fact, it, it, whether this is a, some sort of production dApp or a hackathon like, uh, like this weekend, there's a whole series of steps that you have to go through, including um, planning, the back end, the front end, the smart contract. Uh, we're going to talk about all of that, and then we're going to talk about uh, some of the other ways that um, we're here to help you. So first, I want to talk a little bit about Multibas. Multibas is multi-blockchain as a service. So um, our whole theory is that this will, this is and will be a multi-chain world, um, but blockchain is difficult to build on. And so what we're really all about is helping you get to market faster, um, more easily, and uh, ultimately doing it with, with fewer developer resources. Um, I talked a little bit about CurveGrid, the fact that we're based here in Tokyo, Japan. We have a number of different solutions as well that, that can help you. So in addition to multi-core multibass, we also have a multibass proof, bridge, and spreadsheet. Uh, the latter two are actually former uh, ETH Global Hackathon projects that we turned into, into products. And we also have NFT Bot, which is a Shopify minting app for minting NFTs on, uh, on Shopify. So what is a dApp? We're going to go back to first principles or basics. And... Again, whether you're building uh, the next, uh, um, uh, you know, DEX or, or NFT marketplace uh, or, or you're just hacking on something for the weekend, this is what a typical DAP looks like, right? Front end, back end, connecting to a node provider, smart contract um, on the blockchain. In the mix there as well, you have a wallet, whether that's a non-custodial or custodial wallet, you've got a database. Where Multibass sits in this stack and makes things easier is typically between your DAP front end and back end and your smart contracts. And the idea is that you're actually having to build less on the front end or back end and uh, less of kind of the, the core infrastructure. We take care of a, a lot of that for you. So that's that's what Multibass provides. So we put together a sample DAP that you can use as a as a base for your work this weekend or uh, you know even even going forward. And our DAP is a, a NFT sprite maker. You're going to see it in a moment. Um, you know, again, if 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 you're thinking about uh, putting together an application, uh, the first thing you want to do, of, of course, is ideate, get your team together, uh, and then plan, build, and submit. So throughout the next several pages, we have a, a QR code uh, at the top, and you can you can find this uh, sample DAP uh, repo there. We also on our uh, on our uh, website curvegrid.com have a uh, uh, blog post that we've put up with a complete walkthrough of this tutorial as well as other resources to help you help you get started uh, in in building a DAP. So the planning phase is typically user stories, design, user flow. You decide on your stack, front end and back end, and smart contract. Um, uh, uh, 
you know, and then uh, for the NFT Sprite Maker, um, this is all about one of the key things that we want to do here was allow people to free mint. And you'll see what I mean with that uh, in a moment. Um, on on the front end, uh, this could either be used by uh, end users or admins. We can talk about that a little bit more. And for the smart contract, we started with the Open Zeppelin uh, Wizard NFT smart contract uh, and, and built out from there. So here's our sample DAP. I'm actually going to go uh, switch to it here. You can see it's just running on localhost. So it's called SpriteWrite. And basically what it allows you to do is draw some sort of, you know, fun picture here uh, and then connect your wallet. We're going to do connect wallet. Come on, internet. There we go. Enter my password. There we go. Connect my wallet. Okay, I pulled up the wallet address. And what we've done here is we're actually allowing, uh, we're, we're actually with a custodial wallet paying the gas fees for the user to mint. So when I click mint here, it's going to send the transaction to the blockchain and it'll show up a minute later once it's mined. And there we can go. We can see the sprite and the token ID and the owner and, and the time that it was last transferred at. We can see some of our past sprites. If you want to try this out, you can click on uh, any of this past sprites to load it back into the canvas and then, uh, you know, continue drawing. So this is Sprite Write, our sample and our sample DAP for, for basically writing sprites that we're going to be, uh, you know, demonstrating a few different things here. So what are some of the challenges you have when, when um, uh, building a DAP? Well, the first is interacting with a smart contract. Right? How do you how do you interact with the smart contract? The second uh, is around in this in this example uh, uh, is minting the NFTs. And again, the whole point of the sample DAP is we want to mint the NFTs um, uh, for free for the user, right? So that they don't have to to spend gas uh, to do it. Um, and then the, the third challenge is listing the minted NFTs, and the fourth one is managing the smart contract. So here's the structure of our sample DAP. And I want to, um, you know, want to point out that on the left, you can see we have our, uh, you know, a screenshot of the DAP. Uh, as, as I had shown in the, the kind of typical DAP structure before, we have a front end and a back end. The front end's written in HTML, CSS, and TypeScript. The back end's written in Go. The front end is actually using uh, two different techniques to get data from the blockchain. So first of all, the color palette is actually being pulled from the smart contract itself. The second is that uh, we're using something called an event query to actually pull the, the, the table here, uh, the list of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, sprites, of past sprites. And those are all going through Multibass to the blockchain. And then on the back end, the front end is also, of course, talking to the back end. We have our Multibass Go SDK that's talking to our HSM transaction manager, TXM, to actually mint for free the, um, the sprites. So, you know, what does, like, what does Multibass do for you, basically? How would you set it up in a typical environment? Well, you would typically have both a development and a production environment. And the key differentiators here, the key differences here are, in your development environment, you would have a developers with administrative rights, maybe your, your whole team of, say, 50 or 60 people, that might be making frequent updates to the environment. And then in your production environment, you're going to have your operations team with very limited access. Uh, and updates, for example, controlled by a, uh, CI CD. So keep this in mind as we continue to go uh, to go through. So how do you get set up uh, on this on the sample DAP? Um, first, again, you you clone the repo, um, you sign up for Multibass, you set up your project, and then you understand Multibass middleware. So signing up for Multibass is super easy. What you do is uh, you go to our website and you click on Get Started, and that will take you through a sign up process. There's no credit card or anything needed, just your email address and, and name, and, and you're away. Um, and as I mentioned, we have a, a whole blog post, an ETH Global Tokyo Developer Package, if you go to uh, Resources and Blog, um, that basically walks you through all the steps that you need to get, uh, to get started. In addition for that, we have extensive documentation, uh, including uh, articles and an interactive uh, uh, REST API reference as well. So you'll be well, uh, well supported. Okay, so 
I've got my smart contract written. I've got this cool like Sprite smart contract written and, uh, and now I want to interact with it. Uh, how do I do that? Well, um, you know, there's different tools that one can, one can use, but in Multibass, we've basically built that all into one, um, uh, all into one package. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the Multibass web UI. And this would typically be used by developers during the development stage and then the operations team uh, during the ongoing production stage uh, to essentially um, uh, manage and interact with Multibass itself. So when you, when you log in, you're going to come to the core contracts page. What you can see here is an interactive uh, web UI that allows you to, um, uh, to do a few different things. First of all, you get all of the static uh, state variables at the top. You can see the output here. Here's the color codes that I mentioned before that are coming from the smart contract. We have the total supply. We have the symbol and the name. Then we have all of our events um, uh, from the smart contract. And then we have all of our methods or smart contract functions. Basically, what we can do here is, is use this in a way to um, uh, uh, interact, with the, uh, interact with the smart contract. So for example, in this function here, get sprite image URI, if I come in here and I type in uh, zero, get method, I'm actually going to get the data back from the smart contract. And one of the nifty things we've done here is um, we've embedded all of the image data directly into the smart contract itself. So the smart contract is actually rendering the SVG file directly. So if I paste this data URI in here, I get my beautiful uh, green field with, with the sun shining. Um, but you could see, I think, how, how sort of easy it is to really interact with your smart, smart contract this way uh, using the multibass UI. The second way is via the REST API. And again, in addition to our documentation, we also have integrated REST API uh, functionality built right into uh, the multibass UI here. So you can see how, how easy it is to really interact with, um, uh, with the smart contract this way. In addition, uh, we've got uh, multiple SDKs right now for in, in beta for Go and for TypeScript. Uh, and again, those are, uh, are linked from the tutorial page. Uh, so you, you don't need to build, you know, you don't need to build everything uh, uh, from custom with the, uh, with the REST API. The other thing, the, the final uh, feature that I want to point out is that when you are interacting via the REST API, we have full role-based access control with both users, uh, permissions, uh, cores domains and a full audit log. And that allows you to build either a front end or a back end directly on top of Multibass. So, okay, great. Um, I'm interacting with the smart contract via the, the web UI or via um, the SDK or the REST API. Uh, now I actually want to, uh, to build a little bit more automation in there. Uh, and what I actually want to do, what we what you saw earlier was we're actually paying the gas fees on behalf of the users that are are minting the NFT, and we do this using something called uh, HSM, which uh, is basically a custodial wallet or you know quasi hard hardware security module that allows you to programmatically uh, sign transactions uh, and sign messages on the blockchain and submit them to the blockchain. At the moment, uh, we primarily support Azure Key Vault. Uh, it's a cheap and cheerful, um, uh, basically a third-party uh, custodial uh, service provided by Microsoft Azure uh, wallet service. And in that tutorial, uh, we have very easy steps to basically sign up for an Azure account. And then we have a PowerShell script that uh, in one shot allows you to, to set up a Key Vault. You then load it into Multibass, fund the HSM, and um, you can interact with it via the... Um, uh, the REST API or, or even the web UI very easily. So I come back into Multibus here, I go to HSM and configuration. What I can see here is my HSM configuration, right? This would have been, um, uh, this is coming from again, uh, or would have been loaded in from Azure Key Vault when I set that up. Uh, and then I also have my uh, transaction manager. So I come into my HSM TXM, I can see all of my past uh, transactions. Um, this was the one that I most recently minted. And if I click into here, I can see all of the transaction details, including all of the decoded function parameters and uh, event parameters that were um, emitted from here. So this is a very easy way that, you know, either if you're working on something that is not publicly released yet, uh, and, you, and, and so, you, you know, you don't want to confirm all of the data on Etherscan, or if you're iterating rapidly, um, you know, you can very, very easily use the, um, um, uh, the, the web UI again to manage, uh, manage this. So that's the HSM. Next, 
how do I list the, the, uh, the minted NFTs? So there's a few different strategies for this in general. The first is um, you can iterate uh, using smart contract functions through all of the, um, uh, you know, all the NFTs. One of the challenges there, especially if I'm using something like the ERC-721 enumerable smart contract, is it's very gas heavy. The second way is uh, events, right? And really, this is the correct way, you know, in general to be um, uh, uh, interacting with um, uh, smart contracts uh, uh, from a DAP off blockchain, uh, off of the blockchain. The idea here is that essentially um, the smart contract is going to be emitting event logs and you're reading those and then um, uh, using that, that data to essentially drive your front end or your back end. The challenge with that, of course, is that the, smart, uh, the, the blockchain is eventually consistent and it's very, very complicated to typically deal with this from scratch. So, you know, often you, what you'd be using is a piece of technology called a chain indexer. We actually have a chain indexer built into Multibass. Um, so if I come back to the, the, uh, the Multibass UI here, I can go back to uh, my contracts. I can take a look at Sprite right here and I can see all of my events. And in fact, if I just copy and paste this uh, Sprite right, There we go. I can see, come on, there we go. I can basically get a, a, a really uh, a decoded JSON view of all of my event details, including, again, the transaction that initiated it, the parameters that were, were in the transaction, the, de the decoded um, uh, um, uh, event parameters, time that it was triggered at. And this isn't coming from, uh, it is coming from the blockchain, but it's via our intelligent cache, which handles things like chain reorgs, nodes restarting, um, uh, you know, everything, everything like that. We have one additional feature built on top of that, which is called event queries. And essentially, this is a way to um, aggregate this time series data and um, uh, uh, report on it very, very easily. So again, even though the DAP itself, SpriteWrite, is being driven programmatically, this whole table uh, is, is being driven by an event query. We can also go and take a look at that in the Multibass UI. If you come in here, you can see very, very, uh, it's very, very easy to basically define your event queries, um, you know, either through this interactive builder or just uh, via JSON. That is events. Um, next, we have managing the smart contract. I'm not going to demonstrate this in real time, but essentially, uh, we also have a built-in uh, Gnosis multi-sig functionality uh, that's that's built into Multibass. So what that allows you to do uh, is essentially um, you can set up a uh, multi-sig wallet, either linked to an existing one, deploy it to the blockchain, and then um, if you set, for example, that multi-sig wallet to be the owner of your DAP, when you come into Multibass, either again programmatically or through our web UI, and you say uh, do safe mint, if you select as your signer here that multi-sig wallet, um, Multibass will automatically wrap your transaction in a multi-sig transaction and, uh, and either allow you to sign it via MetaMask or via your, uh, the, your HSM and submit it to the blockchain. So we've basically taken all of the complexity uh, out of, uh, um, you know, away from dealing with, uh, with multi-sig wallets and uh, multi-sig transactions. Bonus time. This is the first bonus. So our spreadsheet plugin, as I mentioned, this was a uh, Hack Money 2020 finalist project that we then over the subsequent months turned into a full-fledged full solution. So what's the lowest common denominator for inter for for building any kind of application? I would argue that it's a spreadsheet. Like there's something like 9,000 smart contract developers in the world, something like a, a 9 million uh, um, uh, developers in general, 25 million actually, sorry, 9,000 9, smart contract developers, 25 million developers, but there's a billion spreadsheet users. So what we actually have is we have a publicly available, it's available on the... Um, uh, on the uh, Google Docs or Google Workspace Store. We have the Multibass for Google Sheets uh, plugin. And this allows you to essentially, when you set your Multibass, uh, when you install it and set your Multibass deployment ID and API key, you can come in here and in uh, real time, uh, you can actually query uh, Multibass and essentially the blockchain in turn. So if I do sprites, query sprites, uh, basically, this is going to go out and call my event query and pull all of my blockchain data in real time into here. And you can say token ID zero through seven. If I come back to Sprite, right? And let's say I load in my uh, my smiley face here and uh, put a little uh, pink hat on top and then go mint. 
Again, it's driving my HSM to mint that to the blockchain. I come back to uh, here and it's a spreadsheet. So I actually have to, to do something a little funky and delete this. There we go. Put it back in because it's Google Sheets. Um, but what you should see in a second is I've got my token ID 8 that was just minted. So this is another option and it's, it's great for both debugging as well as let's say, um, you know, you're, if you're a company, your finance team, or you want to do any kind of uh, reporting, very quick reporting on your smart contracts. We can do things like we can call any arbitrary uh, uh, on-chain um, uh, function. And of course you can use your, uh, uh, you can use uh, aliases as well, which is another, you know, I think key, uh, key thing that helps you go a lot faster with multibass. So we're going to do, let's say, uh, uh, balance of this address here, and it's a spreadsheet, so I can just use all of my uh, standard spreadsheet semantics. And you can see that this owner, uh, this this address here has not a balance of nine on my ERC-721 smart contract. That's bonus number one. Bonus number two is NFT pot. So um, Multibass is our main uh, product, but also uh, last year we released an, um, a Shopify NFT minting app that allows you to easily uh, create, mint, and sell uh, NFTs on Shopify, either through lazy minting uh, or also through importing existing NFTs. And it's super easy to integrate into your Shopify store. Um, Shopify's logged me out, but uh, so I'm not going to show that to you right now. Um, but basically, just add this into your store, and um, um, yeah, you can you can immediately be building um, uh, building store that uh, that allows you to sell uh, sell NFTs. So that's another option for this weekend, actually. If you if you are less into code and more into e-commerce, we're happy to have you uh, happy to have you build on uh, NFT pod as well. Super bonuses: we've actually prepared a smart uh, a public GitHub repository. It's going to go live a little bit later tonight but if you're interested in it come come talk to uh come, come talk to our team with all of the uh or no i shouldn't say all many of the other sponsor smart contracts preloaded uh with an easy script to essentially uh get you up and running in multibass um regardless we what you'll see in this in the sample uh tutorial uh repo is we've got a um uh we have a hard hat and truffle plug a hard hat and truffle plugins for very easily loading your smart contracts into uh, into basically multibass at the same time that you deploy them on the blockchain. So I'm actually going to show you that now in real time. So I have all of my minted sprites here, and I can see on multibass. I also have, for example, a total supply of nine, and here's all the sprites that I minted. I'm going to flip over to my terminal, and I'm going to go uh, yarn. Um, whoops, yarn deploy sprite write testing. So standard, uh, you know, yarn or npm script. Uh, with hard hat uh, and with the multibass plugin it's basically going to go and redeploy the smart contract and relink it to multibass and when i come back in here you see that all of my old sprites are gone because it's a new contract version and i'm just left with uh um uh you know my um uh what i had pre-set up okay great so in closing um we would love for you to use Multibass. We'd love for you to try it out this weekend. Uh, we've been working with uh, different companies for many years, helping them get their dApps to market much, much faster. Um, but even if you don't use Multibass, we're based here in Tokyo. We've got a big team. We're a little bit visible with our red coveralls on, so it's, it should be pretty easy to find us. We're happy to chat about Multibass. We're happy to chat about dApp development in general. Uh, we've got uh, engineers, designers, uh, marketing and business folks as well. Uh, so we're happy to help with any technical questions or any questions about Japan and, and Tokyo. And um, I should mention our prizes. So uh, we're, our, our total prizes are uh, $2,000. We have $1,000 for first place. Second uh, place is $700. And third place is $300. And for anyone that that just uh, um, that incorporates Multibass in some way into your, um, uh, into your project this weekend, uh, we're going to issue an NFT that uh, may be redeemed for physical uh, merch uh, later on, again, through Shopify. So uh, we'd, we'd love uh, love for you to uh, participate and join us. So again, QR code uh, for the repo is there. Uh, our blog post has uh, uh, more details on, on the tutorial. And um, thank you.
Yeah. Uh, so as we're using the API, do we actually have to like necessarily plug the wallet to some Azure key vault and then like have that specific plugin or can we just like fund any normal wallet and then, hey, at our risk of per and perils though? You, you can fund any normal wallet. You absolutely don't have to use uh, um, you absolutely don't have to use Azure Key Vault. That's only if you want to use the HSM functionality. So it works really well with uh, uh, um, MetaMask or any other Web3 wallet as well. So for example, if I come over here and I go to the multi-token smart contract and I click deploy, and um, I let's say I you know just plug some values in here and I hit deploy. Uh, I'll get a MetaMask pop-up asking me to deploy the smart contract and um, I'll confirm that and there we go smart contracts deployed and I can see the deployment transaction here and I can start interacting with it right away so yeah absolutely not a requirement to use that thank you so much all right any other questions I think we do have a couple minutes left actually so yes please so do you have an uh, event webhook webhooks are coming webhooks are absolutely coming um, something that might help you out there in the SDK is it allows you to, um, uh, to basically do polling, uh, for now. Um, and again, with our event queries where, you know, you're not waiting on the, uh, uh, the blockchain node, you're not, you're not spending any, uh, let's say credits with uh, node blockchain node providers. Yeah. It's, 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 it's super easy. Often requested feature. It's coming soon. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Happy hacking.